Hi there, my name is Serge and I work on Adobe's developer evangelism team. And I want to talk to you today a little bit about building mobile applications with Flash Builder 4.5 and the Flex 4.5 framework. Now here we are in Flash Builder 4.5 and um, immediately on the start page you already see a bunch of tutorials that you can click on and just you know, they help you um, get you on your way. But in this video, we're just going to create a, a quick little mobile application so you can see how that works. So in Flash Builder, you can now select to build a new Flex mobile project like this. And when you do that, it'll ask you a couple of things. First of all, obviously, what's the name of your project? So we'll call this Adobe Evangelists and then hit Next. Now in this screen, you actually get a couple of different um, settings and uh, application templates. First of all, it'll ask you what your target platform is. Now right now, this only says Google Android, but we'll be adding uh, other platforms to this as well. The next selection you need to make is the application template. You can actually create a completely blank application using the blank template. There's a view-based application, we'll actually use that in this uh, demo, and also a tab-based application where you can just set up a bunch of tabs to navigate in the application. But like I said, we're gonna use the view-based application template and that's the one that we're gonna use. Um, the next settings here are the uh, application settings. What do you want the application to do? You want it to automatically reorient when you turn your device um, to the uh, landscape mode or, or portrait modes. Do you want to go full screen and things like that? I'm just going to take the uh, defaults here. I'm going to um, select the automatically reorientation and everything else I'm going to leave like that. Then when I click finish, it's going to create that application for me based on the template that I selected. And um, the uh, uh, application or a Flash Builder now actually created a, a bunch of application views. Uh, and we're gonna start off with the home view. So that's the first MXML file that you can start building on. Now what I'm gonna do is uh, actually load a little XML file um, with all the names and information from all the Adobe evangelists um, that are available throughout the world. Uh, so I'll just use an HTTP service component and give that a name. So I'll call this uh, Evangelist XML and then load the actual XML file. And that's going to be on Adobe Evangelists.com slash Evangelists.xml like that. Now, because I'm using the Flex framework um, for this mobile application, I can also use all the Flex framework features, things like data binding and stuff like that. I can use that here as well. Um, but let's just jump into design view really quickly and set up our application. So I'm going to need a list because I want to show um, everyone that's on the evangelism list. So I'll just constrain it to the full size of the um, application. And that needs to be zero instead of 100, like that. And then I'm going to use data binding to actually get the data coming back from that HTTP service call and use that in my list. So I'll set up the uh, data provider to listen to whatever comes back from that uh, service call. So evangelists, XML, and then I'll say last result dot evangelists. And I want all evangelist nodes um, in this list, displaying in this list. Uh, let's see, what else am I going to do? Um, I'm going to make sure that whenever I'm in the home view, that it's going to that it's actually going to get that um, uh, XML file, right? So I'll say creation complete, and then generate a complete handler. And this is also one of the new features in Flash Builder 4.5. You can easily rename that build that um, uh, complete handler if you want to. So I'll just say init instead of what it defaults to. And then I'll say evangelists XML dot send that will send off that HTTP service call. And that should be enough. Now. That's going to get a bunch of data, not just the name, but also the location of the evangelist, um, the type of work he does, the biography, and all, all that stuff is going to be in that um, XML file. So I'll just need to say that the label field that we want to show in that list is actually going to be the name. All right, let's see what happens if we launch this now. 
it's going to ask um, how I want to launch this. I can actually launch this on the desktop or on a device that I actually have connected with USB. I'm going to do that later. I'm um, just for testing purposes. I'm going to use uh, the desktop first. And I'll select one of the devices that uh, you can easily set up. Uh, and this is actually the one that I have. So I'll, I'll use that one, click run, and it's going to open it up in this um, sort of uh, emulator view. And there you can see that this list is now um, running nicely. And you can also see that it has those specific mobile characteristics of a list so you can throw it around and stuff like that. Now when I click on this, I actually want to go to a, another view in my application to show the details of this person. So that's what we'll set up next. So in my views folder, I create a new view by just creating a new MXML component. And it will be based on the Spark uh, component, the, the actual view Spark components. And I'll just give that a name, I'll call it uh, details and click finish. Now in here, um, again, I'll just quickly jump into design view and set this up a little bit. So it looks sort of nice. It doesn't have to be perfect, right? Um, but we'll say that we want a little image here and that'll be something like that. And I'll constrain it to the top of the application. And then also add a little label here and that's where we're gonna display the job title. So I'll say data dot job title, I think I named it. Now instead of this um, label here, so it automatically defaults to the name of that view, I actually want to display the name of the person that I clicked on. So I'll also use data binding for this. And I'll say data dot name instead of details that doesn't really mean anything. Now all these new components and all these new views actually have um, uh, mobile specific um, features. So if I drag a button over to this action bar as we call it here, you see that I can actually drop a button in that little part that is called the action content of your action bar. So I'll drop that in there and I'll, I'll just say that whenever we click on this, we're gonna go back to the list. Um, all right, I'm gonna go jump back into source view and then uh, wire all this up. So I'll say whenever I click on this button, I'm going to generate a click handler. Uh, so I'll call this back button click or something like that. And then I'm going to go back to the previous view that we were in. And I'm just gonna do that by calling the navigator, which is part of this whole template. So navigator dot um, pop view, which will then go back to the view that we were originally on. And then when I'm in my main view and click on the list, then I'm going to go into the actual detailed view. So on my list, I'll say change and add a change handler there as well. And I'll just leave that to the default. And then I'm going to say navigator dot push view and I'm going to push the details view and I'm also going to tell it which uh, data object that it should use for that as well. So I'm going to say event events dot target which will then point to the list and the selected item uh, selected item is what we need there. So what happens here is when I click on the list, it's gonna send the data from the selected item to the details view, and then I can use that in the details view as well. So let's see if, if this actually works. You never know. So I'll click on Alan, and you see that Alan uh, is actually, or the title for my uh, details view is now his name, and he works for strategic, solu strategic Solutions, so that works. The image didn't work yet because I forgot to set that up. So in my image, I'll say that the source is going to be data.profile image. And I know that it doesn't have the full path or the full URL to that profile image, so I'll just add Adobe Evangelists evangelists.com. I should see his photo 
and that back button works as well. And you see it automatically does those transitions and all those things. So it's really easy for you to, um, to build a, a mobile application like this. Right, I'll just uh, quickly finish this up. I'll uh, also add the biography for the evangelist. And I'll use a text area for that. Like that. Make sure that it's nicely in the correct position. Like that. And this should be probably something like 160. That looks nice. And then I'll also use data binding to tie this to the actual biography. And I'll do one more label here, which is going to be the location. All right, let's run it again. Click on someone else here, and you see that um, the biography now shows up, the location shows up, and this uh, the actual text area is also uh, mobile enabled, so you can also throw that uh, around if you want to, things like that. So very easy to really, really build this quickly. Um, you know, in just a couple of minutes, you can you can build an application like this. Now, the really cool thing is that um, you can also run this on your phone, so you can see what it looks like on your phone and, and how it behaves on your phone. So let's do that as well. So I'm going to go into my run configurations. I'm going to say. I'm not going to launch it on the desktop. I'm actually going to launch it on whichever device I have connected. So when I click Run, let me just make sure that I have my device set up correctly. Click Run. And then it's going to compile the application, send it to my phone, install it on my phone. So as you can see, it's really easy to test the application on your device while you're still developing it. And that is the power of uh, Flex and, and Flex 4.5 and Flash Builder 4.5. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of an idea on how easy it is to build mobile applications using our tools. Uh, if you want more information, then check out Adobe's DevNet, and I'll see you next time.